Long time no see. On the workbench today, we have a Zinke Velvet. You may notice the digs look a little bit different. I've moved, part of the reason why I haven't made a video in so long. This is one of my workspaces. This is where I plan on doing the amps, electronics, and some, you know, basic guitar repair, and then out in the shop, uh, do more complex repairs and building instruments. New house, and I wanted to make some noise tonight. Haven't played this amp in a long time. This is a Zinke Velvet 25 watt class A two channel amp. And normally they come in blue crushed velvet. And I think he had red and green as standard colors, but I asked if he would do a purple one. And so uh, he did, bought this from a dealer years ago, brand new. And um, it was funny because I brought this in 2010 to the South by Southwest Three Amigos guitar show. And people were far more interested in this amp than any of the guitars I had on display. And I can't blame them for that. As far as I know, there was one other one made in purple. Maybe there have been more since, I don't know. But it wasn't a standard color, so I appreciated him doing that for me. Like I said, 25 watt class A, two channels. It's got a clean channel, it's got an overdrive channel, it's got built-in reverb and a master volume. I wanted to crank it up and make some noise because I got the house to myself, but the problem is, is it's making the noise. That's the clean channel. Doesn't seem to get better or worse with the uh, volume control, it's just a hum. Overdrive channel. It's got a noisy gain control. Not surprising that the uh, noise would get worse as you crank up the overdrive. A little bit of a scratchy pot. I haven't played this amp in a long time. So if it's complicated, I'll probably take the chassis out and send it to Bruce Zinke. Um, if you're not familiar with Bruce Zinke, he worked at the Fender Custom Shop years and years ago and then struck out on his own he was doing those i think he still do, does the smoky amps but he was making them in actual cigarette packs i was working in a store where we were a dealer for those and it would just blow people's mind when you plugged this little cigarette pack into a 412 cabinet and cranked it up it was pretty funny so those are cool little amps but he does his own he had supro for a while um really knows his stuff and uh this is a great little combo but let's flip it around and uh just open it up and see what we may or may not find. Here's the back side of the amp. It's got an impedance switch. It's got two outputs for speakers, IEC type of plug-in. The fuse, it's got an effects loop. It's got a foot switch for changing channels. I believe they were, I think, Eminence uh, speakers made specifically for him. To get at the electronics, you gotta pull the whole chassis out. I'm just gonna pop this back cover off and see if by chance this is just a, uh, tube issue which is what I hope uh, I guess I wouldn't be terribly surprised with the age of this amp if it wasn't a capacitor issue um, it's been a really long time since I had this open at all and I've never done any work to it I just peeked inside to see what it looked like I don't know if we'll get need to do that or not Kind of hope not. Let's power this up again. So the input's on our right side now. Oh. V1 sounds really microphonic. The rest of it is just the poker on the glass. Interesting. You know, it's like whenever there's this problem with the tube amp, it's like, oh, it's, it's a bad tube. Maybe, it may not be. noise is gone all right so this was v1 we thought it was super microphonic v2 super noisy so let's look at a couple of new jj's 
pop these in here and see what we have. I'm hopeful, since popping that second tube out made the noise go away. I've had brand new tubes in the box not be any good, so I'm never surprised. When I buy tubes, I really should sit down and test them and never assume. A little hard to see. Let those warm up. Pretty decent sized transformers. Three 12AX7s, 12AT7, which I'm guessing is the phase inverter. Well, there's gotta be one for the reverb too. Same uh, volume levels. Okay. Now, just out of curiosity, this is the new tube. I'm gonna leave that right by the amp. This was V2 that was in that position. Let's get a uh, guitar plugged in. So here is the clean channel and I'm gonna hope that this doesn't blow up the uh, camera microphone here. Uh, tone is just right in the middle, you know the deal. And the cut switch for the mids is down right now. Let's just hear it. This is the first time I've made any significant noise in this new house. <laughs> And this is on a Strat, pickups that I wound. It's either gonna be the middle pickup and bridge together, it's gonna to be the neck and middle for the most part. Now we'll boost the mids. it over to the overdrive now I hear a little bit of that weird noise again so that might be valve 2 and that's with the uh, gain at noon halfway so it's got a lot of it's got a lot of grit Sounds like I'm part of the problem. It's not the first time. Okay, so sounds better, but we don't know if that valve two is the problem that I'm still hearing a little bit on the overdrive channel, which would make sense if valve two is for the overdrive channel. Let me pop a new tube into valve two again and give it a listen. That was the old valve one, that's the old valve two. This was the new. Okay, now V1 and 2 are new JJs.